Now, here are Don Amici and Francis Langford as John and Blanche Vickerson in The Honeymoon is Over. It's Christmas Eve, and the Vickersons have not retired. Mrs. Vickerson is busy wrapping presents in the bedroom, while husband John, exhausted as he is from the pre-holiday activity, puts the finishing touches to the tree, which stands proudly in the kitchen, the only other room in the Vickerson's small apartment. Listen. John! John! Will you bring the scissors, please? John! What is he doing in there? Hey! Oh, no. Sleep on the ladder. <laughs> I haven't got the heart to wake him. I better get him off of there. John! John! <laughs> What happened? Oh, you poor dear. Did you hurt yourself? No, no, I'm all right. I let fall off that ladder. I must have fainted. Yes, dear. You were fainting like a log when I came in. <laughs> Why, John. What? You never even touched your dinner. Not a morsel of it. I don't like the looks of it, Blanche. Oh, stop that talk. It's perfectly good food. You let it sit there on the kitchen table for hours getting cold. Do you want me to warm it up for you? No. Just tell me what's on that big plate. Are you trying to be funny, John? I'm not trying to be funny, Blanche. What is it? You know very well I can only cook two things, liver and rice pudding. Well, which one is that? How can you be so nasty on Christmas Eve, John? Blanche, I just asked you a civil question, that's all. I didn't think it was liver because your liver always looks like rubber heels. That stuff looks more like scrambled eggs, so I thought it might be rice pudding. Why don't you taste it and find out? I'm not hungry. That's why you're always tired, John. You don't eat enough. I eat plenty. Well, what'd you have for lunch today? Well, you ought to know. You packed it for me. And listen, Blanche, I'm getting sick of carrying my lunch to the office in paper sacks. Why can't I go to a restaurant like the other John, family? what are you talking about? I haven't fixed your lunch for two years. Oh, Blanche, every morning of my life I find my lunch wrapped in brown paper on the side of the sink. Lunch? That's the kitchen scrap. <laughs> No wonder I never have an appetite. Why do you do that to me, Blanche? Go on, eat some dinner and finish trimming the tree. I don't want any dinner. I want to go to sleep. Aren't you going to finish the tree? I can do it in the morning. But, John, tomorrow morning is Christmas Day. I expect a lot of people to drop in. The butcher's coming and the milkman is Listen, coming. Listen, Blanche, and... I can't afford to give those guys presents. Why did you invite them over? I didn't invite them. They're coming here to collect their bills. Bills? What bills? I gave you money for the bills. Well, I had to buy presents, didn't I? My sister Clara sent me a package, and I had to get her something in return. No, you didn't. Nobody asked her to send you anything. Well, she did just the same. So I bought her a bottle of perfume. How much was that? $24. $24? But nobody can carry that much perfume. It's only an ounce, silly. It's the latest perfume. Very daring. It's called Perhaps. Perhaps? For $24, you should get positively. <laughs> Crabby, John. We're not going to fight on Christmas Eve, no matter what happens. Remember, you promised. Okay. I'm not even going to get mad because you didn't send me a Christmas card. I did send you a Christmas card. It isn't necessary to make excuses or alibis, John. I'm going to forget it entirely. I don't have to make excuses. I did send you a Christmas card. I mailed it five days ago. John, you promised you wouldn't shout. Well, then why are you goading me like this? You know, I wouldn't say I sent you a Christmas card unless I had. I never received it. Well, then it got lost in the mail. That's possible. Thank heaven. All the other cards came. Well, that doesn't mean anything. One card can get lost, can it? If you sent it. I did send it. I swear I sent it. it. Had a wonderful poem on it. A beautiful picture was trimmed with lace. Cost me a buck. All right, John. But do you believe me? Let's not discuss it anymore. Okay. But I hope you don't forget to send one next year. <laughs> 
What's the use? All right, so I didn't send your card. That's all? Why didn't you admit it before? There was nothing to admit. I just said I didn't send it to end the argument, but I really sent it. What did it say on it? It said, Merry Christmas to my love. That could uh, be anybody. Let me finish. <laughs> it said, Merry Christmas to my love, my wife, my life, my turtle dove. Life with you is great, it seems. I love you more than pork and beans. <laughs> insult to injury, John. Well, how do I know what it said? I can't remember what... What's that laying on top of the newspaper? There it is. There's my card. So it is. See, you didn't get to have to get so excited after all. Thank you, darling. It's a lovely card. Wear it in good health. <laughs> well, let's open the presents and then go to sleep. Well, how could you, John? You know we never open presents until Christmas morning. Besides, you haven't finished trimming the tree. All it needs is a string of lights. One of the bulbs is blown, that kills the whole string. Can't you buy a bulb? The stores aren't open now. What time is it? It's five past twelve. Well, that's good. It's Christmas Day. Let's open the presents. You didn't even hang up your stocking. I haven't got one that would hold anything. <laughs> they look like lace curtains. Come on, let's open the presents, Blanche. Come on. Huh? Oh, all right. Say, we haven't got very many this year, have we? Oh, who's this from? That's from Leo Goosey. It's amazing how you went to the one shaped like a bottle. Oh, oh, is that what it is? I hope it's good stuff. Uh, mm, that's not bad at all. John, that shampoo. Shampoo? <laughs> Why, that chiseler, two-bit Leo. What do I want with a bottle of shampoo? And to think I threw out 39 cents on a tie for him. <laughs> what have you got there? It's another present for you. From your ball. No kidding. Gee, that's a big one. Uh, what is it, Blanche? A five-gallon can of lighter fluid. <laughs> well, that's fine. That's just what I need. I don't even own a lighter. Well, don't feel too bad, John. Maybe you can exchange it for something else. Last year he sent me a bowling ball case. Must get these things in a rummage sale. I never heard of them in present. Here's one for me from Louise Shaw. Phew, that, that's a billy. Oh, Louise always sends something nice. Not expensive, but it usually comes in handy. Well, look at that. What is it? It's a polo score pad. Isn't that nice? That'll sure come in handy. Honest, Blanche, you've got the weirdest collection of friends. Is there anything else? Just our presents to each other. Why don't you look at what I got you first, and then you can show me what you got for me. Now close your eyes. I'll unveil it. Well, all right. I hope you didn't spend too much, dear. I, I don't really want any. Open your eyes. Blanche. Oh, Blanche, darling. That... Why, that's beautiful. That's a dream. A portable bar with a brass rail. Don't you think a kiss is in order, John? Oh, a million kisses. Well, stop kissing the bar. I meant a kiss for me. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, darling. It's just too good to be true. Oh, you're wonderful. Uh, Blanche, that, that must have cost a fortune. But John, don't get angry, but I sold my fur coat. You, you sold your fur coat? I wanted you to have the bar, and I didn't have the money. You sold your coat. That beautiful fur coat that you bought yourself for my birthday. <laughs> that gorgeous bald mink. I got $75 for it. The bar cost 85 Oh, Blanche, you never should have sold that bald mink. It doesn't matter. I have a cloth coat, and I never get cold. Yeah, but uh, you don't understand. Uh, open the present I got for you. I can't wait, John. Oh, a muff. A fur muff. Genuine pluck skunk. <laughs> I had a made especially to match that coat. It can hold two full quarts. <laughs> and you sold the coat. Well, what's the difference, darling? Someday you'll make a lot of money, and then you can, you'll be able to have a coat that'll match the muff. I'm very happy, John. Yeah, I know, but... And you uh, still have the gorgeous bar. That's just it. What's the matter? I sold all my bourbon to pay for the month. <laughs> it's great, isn't it? What a break for both of us. I think it's wonderful, John. What do you mean, Blanche? I've never been so happy in my life. We both made a sacrifice, and that's worth more than all the gold and precious jewels in the world. Just to know that you gave up a prized possession is proof enough that you'll love me. I've always loved you, Blanche. I may holler and rant and act like a first-class crumb sometimes. But you never doubted that I loved you, did you? No, John. It's been seven years, honey. Most of it uphill. I haven't showered you with diamonds or bought any yachts. But I try not to deny you anything. I suppose you have your little faults. What woman hasn't? Or what man either, for that matter. 
we're both pretty sensitive people. Maybe that's why we be so much. Still, I don't think we're any worse than any other married couple. At least we have a safety valve and we can let off steam. Some of the others just carry it inside until the break comes. Now, Blanche, I like it this way. And I love you more than anything on earth. John. Cut that out. I'll prove how much I love you. Where is that liver or rice pudding or whatever it is you made? <laughs> it's liver. I'll eat every bit of it if it kills me. Let's go. <laughs> Merry Christmas, darling. Merry Christmas. <laughs>